Hey guys, what's up? Daniel here today. We're doing a quick unboxing and an overview of the Amazon Fire Phone. Now this phone retails for $650 off contract and $200 on a two year contract with AT&T. So let me just show you real quick what's here inside the box. Uh, first we pull it out of the sleeve right here and it says we have 32 gigabytes. This also comes in 64. We have Firefly, Dynamic Perspective, and Dolby Dual Speakers. Uh, so opening this box up, the first thing you're gonna get here are some documentation, getting to know your Fire Phone in English and in Spanish. We're gonna get the Fire Phone itself right here. So we can pull that out of the plastic right here. And we'll check that out in a second. And we're gonna get the USB cable here so you can connect this to your computer and also charge the phone. Nothing special there. In here we're gonna get the little block for connecting the phone to the wall. And it's just this nice small little block with a USB connection. And last but not least, you're gonna get the headphones here, which are the apparently tangle free headphones that Amazon made for this phone. Now you can, you can purchase these separately, I believe for other devices and they are pretty nice. They look a lot like the Apple ear pods and you can kind of see the design right there. And they are magnetic here at the top, so you can attach that and then you can just wrap them up. It does have a flat cable right there, which is generally what the Tangle Free headphones have. So uh, I'm not sure if it really is Tangle Free and you can only really find out after putting these in your pocket, but they do sound pretty good uh, from what I've used them. And yeah, so let's move on to the overview. All right, so taking a closer look at the phone here, we have a 1280 by 720p display here on the front, which is an LCD and it has 315 pixels per inch. So this is a very nice display. It's certainly not the best and not up there with phones like the Galaxy S5, but it's certainly a good display, uh, just like other mid-range devices out there. Now, the thing about this phone is that it's a mid-range device, or at least specs, at a high-end price. Now, this is $200 on a two-year contract, which is a lot like the other major phones out there. So that's where the big competition is. But if you look at it from a off contract perspective, like someone like me who buys uh, phones off contract, this is a very expensive phone. $650 is a lot more than something like the Moto X and the OnePlus One and a used iPhone 5 or a 5S or even a 5C. So there's definitely a, you know, a big competition there with Amazon because I mean, they price their phone at a very expensive or a very high price. and. I'm assuming the margin here is big because the specs aren't good, um, but I, I guess, I don't know if maybe dynamic perspective cost them a lot. But uh, yeah, I mean, you can shave down $100 off the phone by just taking into account the one year free membership that you get with Prime, which is I believe is $100 now or $70, I'm not sure. But you can cut that price down. You're also gonna get the free photo up to, uh, upload, so you get free photo storage. And uh, those two things, I believe that's it. You can also back up your phone for free. So you have all your information on the cloud and you can back it up and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, taking a look here at the home screen, we have the carousel here of apps, which uh, you know, the far back, that, the more far back that you go is the, the apps that you've least used or used a long time ago. And then the newer apps that you just opened up are here on the front. Uh, if we take a closer look here at the phone itself, we have the camera and Firefly button right there. If I tap it once, I'll get the camera. If I hold it, I'll get Firefly. We have the volume up and volume down. And right here we have the SIM card slot. So you can insert your SIM card right there. At the bottom, we have the uh, charging connector. And so you can connect it to your computer. We have a speaker, a microphone, and uh, just some screws right there. We don't have anything on the right side. And on the top, we have another speaker, uh, the headphone jack and the lock button. Now, it's cool that you have the two speakers because that'll certainly help when you're watching movies or playing a game. And the thing, the, the lock button is kind of awkwardly placed because I normally hold these phones like this because, I mean, this is a perfect size for a phone because it's 4.7 inch and it weighs nice, it has a nice heft, heftiness to it. Uh, but yeah, the lock button, unlike an iPhone, is on the other side. And it's kind of weird because I kind of, if I'm using the phone like this, like I normally do, I kind of have to reach my hand up a little bit to get to it. Now if I hold the phone kind of like at an, a very far angle, I might be able to operate it and uh, do it at the same time and use it. So uh, I don't know, as far as a normal 
holding position, it's kind of weird to get to that button. And the Firefly button is conveniently placed so that you click it all the time. I've clicked it a lot and uh, I normally get launched into the camera. So, and if you, if you actually tap it once and you tap it again, you're gonna take a picture by mistake. Um, but I've, I've done that a lot where I go like this instead and it takes me to the camera and I have to click home. So it's just, it's placed there and it's not a very good placement for it, but I guess, I don't know, you'll be launching the camera maybe more than actually locking the device. But I mean, you can also just go ahead and unlock it by clicking home. And uh, you can kind of see the dynamic perspective right there with this room lock screen, which is extremely cool. And now the thing about dynamic perspective is that it's just how the name sounds. It's a dynamic perspective. This isn't 3D like something that you'll see on a 3D TV or even the 3DS. You're, it's it's kind of like the phone has some depth to it, right? And you, you almost feel like you might be able to reach in and grab something. So it's not a an annoying 3D effect. It's a very nice and subtle perspective effect. Now if I drag right here, I can go ahead and just open back up to my phone. And if I drag down here, I can open the app drawer and see all the apps that I have on the device or the apps that I haven't downloaded to the device that are on the cloud. And uh, yeah, I mean, the thing here is that there's a lot of uh, little movements that you do with your hands to get all the features to show up at times and all the settings. So here you can see that there's no clock at the top. And if I wanna see the clock, I just turn the device slightly and that will pop up. I can also do this and that's gonna pop that up. And if I swift, shift it to the side a little bit, you can see that the, you know, some little extra descriptions show up and that's seen throughout the device on the Maps app and a couple of other apps and it's kind of cool. Um, but, you know, there's, there's gonna be a lot of people that might get tired of having to go like this to look at the time. If we shake it the other way here, we're gonna get a different type of settings and different apps, but here we would get your email and calendar updates as well as weather if you set that up. So we can go into something, let's say, okay, let's say in this podcast or in this audiobook, I mean, let's see here, we can see our daily listening. And if we swipe the other way, we're going to get settings for the player. And, you know, it's different in every single app. So uh, you'll basically have to learn. It's not like settings on the right and uh, other things on the left. Different apps will have different things whenever you shake it. The other cool little feature here that is seen throughout other phones, which isn't really specific to this phone, is uh, shaking here to actually scroll through the web page, and it's very smooth shaking, or not shaking, but just kind of shifting the device here. It's very smooth, and uh, it's actually a very soft, uh, nice feature. Let's go to dargadgets.com real quick. And the phone is quite smooth. I did have it uh, crash on me when I was using Firefly once, which wasn't great, um, but here, let's scroll through. Let me scroll through here. There we go. You can see the scrolling there, and it's very smooth once the uh, web page loads. You can kind of scroll through it very nicely. And yeah, it's a lot of really subtle features, just like the subtle dynamic perspective feature, which I don't see a lot of people caring for because it's such a subtle feature, and it's not, or at the moment, not really used in many games or, uh, on, and anything that's really taking advantage of it too much, but it's cool and is there. Now, as far as the specs go in this device, as I said, it is a mid-range phone, but it does have a 2.2 gigahertz uh, quad-core Snapdragon 800 CPU, along with Adreno 330 GPU and two gigs of RAM. So the you can see the device runs pretty smoothly and that's due to those specs, but those specs aren't new. They are uh, what mid-range devices are using or last year's specs, as some people say. And yeah, you have a 2400 milliamp hour battery, and this is running on Fire OS 3.5. So if you're familiar, as I said, with the tablets, you should be a little bit familiar with this one. Um, and it is on, on top of Android, which is nice, but the thing is that you don't get any of the Android apps. So you're not getting Gmail, the Play Store, you know, Google Maps or anything like that. And Amazon does provide you with replacement apps that replace what Google normally gives you with Android but they're not really nearly as great. And a lot of these things, just it just kind of reminds me of a device that I would have used a couple of years ago. And I'm not trying to bash Amazon or anything. I do applaud them for doing something that was different, 
but I just it just doesn't feel like a, like an up-to-date phone everything feels a little bit old and especially the icons I'm not a fan of the icons that they've and the colors that they use and everything it just feels like something that Blackberry would have made and uh, yeah I mean there's nothing much to it the back has a glass back which is kind of like the Nexus 4 and it's not bad it actually feels quite nice the phone does warm up a lot when you whenever you use it for a while and do you play games and this isn't really a review this is more of an overview but I you know I'll use the phone if you have any questions feel free to message me I'll get back to you as soon as I can and uh, you know I'll help you decide if you if this phone's right for you or if it's not but uh, yeah I mean that's it for this video guys if you have any questions as I said feel free to message me make sure to subscribe to this channel to uh, stay up to date with the latest videos and tech news and make sure to visit darkadges.com for more stuff and yeah we'll catch you guys in the next video goodbye Where do I go onto airplane mode? Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. Is there anything else I can help you with today or any other questions you have? Nope, that's it. Okay, then thank you and I hope you enjoy your new fire phone. Thank you.